What's up guys, welcome back. So in this video, we are gonna get started with actually authenticating our users. So right now the root view of our application is set to this inbox view. What I want us to do is just get the login view set up as the root view of our application to get this video started. So let's say login view there and let's just go ahead and run the app really quickly. And this is just gonna help us out with getting to that login screen um, right off the bat so that we can uh, introduce this new functionality here and test this stuff out. So that's looking all good. We can go to our sign up page. Everything's looking good. So next up, what I want us to do is create some new folders in our authentication folder up here. So let's go ahead and create two new guys. We are going to create one for our service and one for our view models. And we're going to create three new files here. So first up, we are going to go to our view model folder and create two. So I'm going to create a Swift file. This one's going to be my login view model. And let's just go up to the top and import Swift UI. I'm going to say class login view model. It's going to be an observable object. And we are going to leave that as is. And then next up, we're going to create a registration view model. And once again, import Swift UI, say class registration view model, which is also going to be an observable object. And the next file or file we're going to create is in our service folder, another Swift file, and we're going to call this an auth service. And this guys is going to be class auth service. And we're just going to leave that as is. And really quickly, before we start writing code, I want us to talk about how these things are going to work together. So this auth service is going to house all of the code associated with communicating with Firebase. So actually logging our users in and signing them up and stuff. And then these view models are going to implement this auth service and call those login and sign up functions. So this auth service, once again, guys, is going to contain all of the code that's associated with logging our users in and signing them up and signing them out and stuff. And then we're going to implement that stuff inside of our view models. So this is following the MVVM architecture pattern. So let's just go ahead and now introduce some functions here. I'm going to write a function to log my user in. It's going to be with email, email, which is a string and password, which is also a string. And it's going to be async and throw. And if you guys are unfamiliar with what these words mean, I highly recommend checking out a tutorial I have on async await um, it's the new way of interacting with networks or your network layer that Swift introduced and it's really, really cool. So if you're confused about that, just go ahead and check the tutorial out there. The link is in the description to this video. But let's keep going. Uh, let's go ahead and just make another function to create a user. And we can just copy and paste all this stuff. And we're also going to need a full name and open up our brackets. So we're gonna create a user with an email, a password, and a full name. And that's gonna be it for now, guys. So let's go ahead and see how we're gonna introduce these functions inside of these view models. So in my login view model, this is obviously where I wanna log my user in and ultimately call this login function, right? So let's go back here and see how we're gonna do that. So I can write a func here that says login. And we're going to create two published properties on this view model. We're going to say published var email equals blank at published var password equals blank. So we're going to utilize this email and password uh, published properties inside of this view model in order to call that auth service function that we ultimately need to log our user in. So then we're going to say auth service dot login with email and password. And we actually have to go here and say, uh, try await. And then we just need to mark this with async throws as well. So now let's hop into our login view and see if we can actually implement this function and also implement this view model there. And then we're just gonna do the same thing with the registration view model and go ahead and test that stuff out to see if we can create some users. So back in my view folder, let's go to our login view 
And you guys notice that we have the email and password field here. We are just gonna delete these and we are actually going to use the properties that we created on the view model. But first we need to create that view model. So we're gonna say state object var view model equals login view model, just like that. And then go down here and replace the text field uh, items with uh, for email and password with what we use on the view model. So we're gonna say view model dot email and view model dot password. So you guys might be wondering why we do this. It isn't necessary to do this. I just prefer it this way. And that's because now you're going to see down here when we actually go to call this login function, we don't have to pass those things along to the view model. They already belong on the view model. So when you say view model dot login, you don't have to pass anything into this because those things now exist on the view model as published properties. If we didn't do that, we would have to add them as input properties here. And that just gets kind of annoying, especially when you start to have a lot of input parameters or like things that your function needs. And the reason we need this once again is to pass them along to our auth service function right here because it needs the email and the password to try to log the user in. So now we can go back here, guys, and we actually have to wrap this up in a task. So I'm going to say task try await view model dot login. And if you go ahead and just hit command B to try to build your project, everything should build successfully. Awesome. So now guys, let's just go and see if we can test this out. This isn't actually going to log anybody in because we haven't created a user yet. I just want to go and add a print statement to our auth service function to make sure that this is all working correctly. So I'm going to say print debug email is email print debug password is password. And let's just go ahead and run our application. See if we can type some stuff into those fields, hit the login button and see if we get back those print statements. So open up your console. I'm going to say like test at gmail.com. One, two, three, four, five, six, hit that. And you guys will notice down in my console here that we are getting that print statement back successfully. And we are reading the email that was typed in as well as the password. I typically just do six cues for my password guys that meets all the password requirements for this. Uh, it's not super like strong or anything, but it just makes logging in simple, right? Um, with all these test users we're going to be using. So next up, I want us to do the same thing for our create user function uh, that, that we just did with our login uh, stuff. So let's go to this registration view model and we are going to write a function. So I'm going to, well, first we're going to create these properties that we need. So publish var email equals blank string, published var password equals blank string and published var full name equals a blank string. And if you guys look at our sign up screen, that's exactly what we need from this form. And then we're just going to write a function here to create our user. So I'm going to say func create user. And now we don't need to add any of these as input parameters here because we just added them to our view model. It's going to be async throws. And we're going to say try await auth service dot create user with email, password, full name. Easy as that. And now guys, all we need to do is, let me just make this one tick bigger for you guys in case you were having trouble seeing that. Let's go into our registration view and implement this stuff now. So once again, we can delete all of these properties here and just create an instance of our view model, state object var view model equals registration view model. And now we are going to replace these properties with the ones that we just added to our view model. Just like so. And down here in our button handler, we are just going to create a task to try await our view model dot create user. Simple as that guys, right? That's super clean, super easy implementation. Now um, that we have sort of the foundation of this set up in our code, what we need to do next is actually implement the backend functionality to create a user and log them in. Um, and then we need to go over what happens when that process succeeds. So what I mean by that is when I hit the sign up button here, I want that backend process to initiate, right? Of actually creating a user on my Firebase backend. And then once that process completes or the user has successfully been signed up, I ultimately want to take them over to the root view of the application or their inbox view, right? And we need to do that with our login as well. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So let's hop back into this auth service and let's start filling out this create user function, guys. 
So we're going to open this up with a do and catch block. So this is all part of the async throws functionality. Basically, we're going to try to do something, and if something goes wrong, it's going to hit this catch block and show us the error. So what we're going to try to do is this. We're going to say let result equal try await, and make sure you import Firebase up at the top, guys. Uh, we're going to say auth dot auth dot create user with email and password. And this is the whole reason we added these as input parameters to our function here. We want to be able to pass them along to this Firebase function that requires the email and password to create our user. And if that all goes well, we're going to say print debug created user. And we're just going to say result.user.uid. So basically what's happening here is we're making this asynchronous function call. And whenever it's done, if it completes successfully, it's going to store the result of that call in this property here. And then we can use that on the very next line of code. It won't go to this next line of code, however, until this uh, asynchronous network call completes. Previously, before, what we had to do was use completion handlers, and that was messy for all kinds of reasons. I'm not going to get too deep into the new async await stuff. Like I said, if you guys want to know more about that, just go ahead and check out the video uh, tutorial I have on that. Link is in the description to this video. Um, so next up, guys, if anything goes wrong, we are just going to print the error out here. We're going to say print debug failed to create user with error error.localized description. So you guys might be wondering where this error comes from. Well, because Swift is so cool, it automatically gives us access to this error inside of this catch block. Previously, what you have to do is say catch let error, but now it just automatically does that for you. So we don't have to type that out, which is pretty cool. So if anything goes wrong during the sign up process, if there's any errors, it's going to give us back this print statement. So that should be all we need to do, guys. Let's just go ahead and run our code now and see if we can test this out. So let's try to start this off with like maybe a bad email. So let's just say like test. And then we'll say, you know, type your full name. And let's do like three characters for the password. Okay, then hit sign up. And let's filter this console stuff out with our debug. That's the whole reason I type that debug uh, there, guys, so I can filter out all the nonsense in the console. And you guys will notice that we get back this error message here. The email address is badly formatted. So if I fix that and say test at gmail.com or something, and then try to hit sign up again, because I only have three characters in my password, it'll give me a different error, which is super cool, right? It's gonna say the password must be six characters long or more. So if I fix that and just do six characters like that and hit sign up, you guys notice, ooh, that we get another error message and that's because I'm already using that account. So let me just go ahead. You guys shouldn't get that. I already created a, like a user with that email. So this error is indicating to me that that email address is already in use. So the error handling that we get from Firebase is awesome. I'm going to say like test three at gmail.com or something like that. And then hit sign up. And you guys notice we get back our success message. We created the user and this is their user ID. So that's what we get back as part of this result. You guys can see here that we can just use that in the very next line of code and access some information about the user we just created. And if I open up my Firebase console guys, right here and refresh this, in my authentication section of my console, you guys will see the user I just created here. We see their user ID is like 5FIUX, and then in my print statement, that's exactly what we're getting back there. So that's super awesome, guys. We successfully created like a test user in our application. In the next couple of videos, we're gonna get through the rest of this authentication process. There's a couple things we need to do. One, we need to make sure that we once the user successfully signs up, we implement some logic to show or take the user to their inbox view. And also, we need to implement our login functionality and sign out functionality as well. So in the next video, we're going to be finishing up with this authentication functionality before we actually get into sending messages to different users and stuff like that, guys. So get excited for that. We will see you there. Peace.